Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another GD Office Hours recap. Today, we are going to be covering user variables automation. So specifically, I would like to hit on two topics today. The first is going to be record creation for your user variables table. And the second is going to be value setting. Uh, so the first is really going to be about creating records dynamically rather than having to pre-fill your user variables table with a set of users. Uh, you're probably already doing that for a user table, so you could theoretically at the same time do that. But I want to show you a different way to ensure that users will always be able to have the correct app logic, even if you forget to add them to your user variables table. So, and then the, the second uh, topic today is going to be value setting. So dynamically adjusting the variable values that are associated with the current user throughout their app experience. So why is this important? Well, again, AppSheet does not give you native variables and it does not give you states, which are commonly used features within native uh, front end development to inform app logic. So again, we don't have that available to us. So instead we've created this user variable table and we will be dynamically updating it throughout the user's app experience in order to uh, best inform their app logic and be able to create unique views that, that would only be available with these sorts of variable features. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so first things first, you're going to want to establish a a certain app flow that your user experience will follow. And that is going to inform when, uh, when you want to create user variable records, if, if you need to create them and, uh, the, the exact tables that those are going to take place on. So in my case, what I had contrived is I wanted to, uh, create this experience where a user would select a, a certain function that they want to perform. In this case, it would be a photo review. And once they select that, then they would then select a project that they would want to review photos for. Now, the next step is going to require a, an input of user variables. So whenever I select photo review, I'm then taken to a view that is based on my project table. So I know I need to create an action on my project table that is then going to create a user variable record if it does not exist. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, so here I am in the action menu and I've navigated to my project dropdown. What I need to do now is create an action that is going to create a user variable record if it does not exist. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new action. Create user variable record. Uh, put in parentheses, if not exist. That's a common SQL syntax element. So uh, just familiar for me. Okay, let's go ahead and create the correct kind of action. We need to add another, a new row to another table using values from this row. So we'll select that. We then need to select the table that we'll be adding a row to. And the only thing that we need to pre-fill at this point is our email, but we could also set the current project. Uh, so we might as well just go ahead and do that because they are selecting from the project table. So we will have the exact project that they need. So the first thing we want to do is establish their email, which is going to be the current user's email. Also a handy reason to have the email field as the primary key. Second thing we want to do is uh, we're going to establish our project. So that is going to be the ID or the primary key of our current table, the project table. Okay, so we've got that. We're going to hide this action. It doesn't need to be seen. It just runs in the background and I have an icon that I use every time there's a background action. Now, there is specific behavior to this. We don't wanna continue creating user variable records for the same user because that can confuse app logic. So instead, what we're going to do is create it only if it does not exist. So the count of user variable records is zero. 
And again, I can do this without having to specify a specific user because we're security filtering by user email. So the only user variable records that would enter the app are the ones for this user. And I say ones plural, but it should only ever be one. Now, I did notice earlier that as I was explaining this, I actually had the same action in our gallery table. So the home view is based on the gallery table. It says home, but it's actually just a slice of the gallery table. So I noticed again that that action already existed. So I've got this create user variable record, if not exist. Um, so that's actually when it's taking place in my app is at the gallery level, but really the first time we need it is for this photo review. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that it happened at or before that point. So you could do it either way. Again, this, this doesn't have to take place in a specific area, but you definitely want to make sure it is happening at any point. It would, the user variable record is going to be required. All right. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to group that into a grouped action. So right now, I believe there is an action set for this row select. Uh, so I've got a grouped action here. It says set current project and nav to photo selection dash. So if I go back to my actions here on the project table, I would find that action. And before I input my project, I'm going to want to create that. Oh, it looks like I literally had the exact same name on my other action. That's funny. So it has a two at the end. Okay. You got to love consistency of nomenclature. Anywho. All right. So the first thing that's going to take place here is the user variable record is going to be created if it doesn't exist. And then it's going to be set. So we'll next, uh, the next thing we'll do is, is talk about what's happening in that action. And then the last action that takes place here in this grouped action is going to be a navigation. So it's going to navigate you to a dashboard view. And in doing so, it's going to inform some new slice filters. So I believe that we already covered the slice filters in our dynamic dashboards video. So if you need a recap of that, please go back and check that out. Otherwise, let's move on to the setting of our user variable value. So in order to do that, we talked about this a little bit with the input feature. The first thing you need to do is create an action on the table that you're going to be modifying values for. So in this case, we're modifying the values of the user variable table, and we're going to set our current project, which is called project. That column is project in the user variable table. And we have to follow this specific nomenclature. So it's got to be in brackets, underscore capital input dot, and then you can specify a variable name that is arbitrary. So you can create your own one. Um, for me, it made sense to call this current project, but you may not be working with projects, so you can have your own name there. The next thing you need to do is in the advanced dropdown, you need to specify the input. So you're going to copy the name that you listed here and the underlying data type, which in my case is a string. So I put text here. And then the next step is going to be to trigger this action. So we know that we're triggering it from the project table because that's where our selection is taking place. The user is going to select one of these records, which is on the project table, and that initiates that action. So we're going to go back to our grouped action here. Um, we'll find our input project, AOSR. I, I have this nomenclature in my app development so that I know uh, a little bit about the action types that are taking place, but AOSR stands for action on a set of rows. And so I'm going to navigate to that action just to see what's happening. Um, so I would create this if it didn't exist, but it obviously does in this case. So I just want to explain what's happening. So again, it's happening on the project table. That's where the initiation is taking place and it's modifying values on the user variable table. So we're going to execute an action on a set of rows on our user variable table. The row that's being modified is the row for the current user. So this again has to be a list of primary keys. So we're doing list of our user email. And then we need to specify an action that takes place. If the action that's taking place has that input feature, 
then it's going to come up with this additional dropdown here that says with these inputs. And it's going to give you a dropdown of any input options that were available. So in our case, the only one that we were modify or the, the only one that we allowed in that action was called current project. So you can select that and then you specify a value that you're going to set it to from your current table and record. So in this case, they would select a project. That project has an associated primary key value ID and we're setting it to that value. Again, this is hidden and it happens in the background. All right. And I, I specified this condition if the ID is different than what the user's current project is already, then you can run this action. You don't technically have to do that. You could do it either way. Uh, it would work the exact same functionally if you omitted the condition altogether. All right, so once you do that, we'll notice that as I select a project, this, this is our user variables table. It's actually just a, a view of our user variables table. You'll notice that the project was reset to field install two. Now this input project action is visible. Um, in most cases, it probably wouldn't be, but I wanted to demo that for a previous video. So that's there. So let's go back and we'll, we'll select our field install one. And you'll notice that our project got reset to field install one. Now, uh, I, I think one of the things that is notable here is I obviously have some empty data, had a filter going that I did not want. All right, so we've got photos for our project and uh, you know we can select our categories here. Anyway, so that's the full experience. You can see uh, the whole dashboard here. Again, these these additional views within the dashboard are informed by slice filters that are based on our user variables table. And again, I believe we explained that on the dynamic dashboards video. So you can go back and check that out if you want to recap. Awesome guys. Well, I will see you in the next video.